Hello, hello, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, a new guide video. So, I've been requested to do an SSTO guide, and now I'm um, how to land an SSTO. And so, today's topic will be obviously this. And as you can see here, we are still in a low Kerbin around low Kerbin around orbit. Yeah, sure. I mean, in a low orbit around Kerbin, of course, in our um, SSTO. <laughs> which we've built in the SSTO guide and you have seen the building and thinking process of it and um, generally speaking so now you can see the apps and periaps height and now the interesting part is we want to land this thing of course um, on the KSC runway so the runway is over here as you can see where the green um, where the green part lands and on this Africa type looking continent which you should probably spot after a few um, a little bit looking around and then here in the top we can see some something that resembles Europe and Spain though that's the um, like all the continents on Kerbin have no real resemblance to the real world equivalent so you shouldn't really think about that and then you can see if you don't know where the KSC is by activating this marker here at the top um, right side you can activate different markers for example as well space debris which you can see here which is usually disabled and the K Kerbal Space Center marker which is now enabled which was earlier disabled of course so you can see if we hover over it Kerbal Space Center so now we know where to go if we can't find it from the from the map view only so now we're just um, time accelerating to a nice point where you can decelerate like any regular orbit or from a regular space mission where you have parked yourself or reached an orbit you have to point yourself retrograde which we are doing right now with oh by the way we have we are now using our lovely RCS th RCS thrusters oh my god um RCS thrusters which are really useful for maneuvering space of course and we have plenty of RCS and liquid fuel and now we are going to the accelerator orbit so that our orbital um orbital velocity drops and our periaps of course goes down however i did i forgot to my, um activate the intro which button was it again um, um, no, that was the wrong one. Here we go. Now we have the nuclear engines, so you can just just checking a little bit, and now you can um throttle up to one hundred percent. Now you can see the periapsis is going down into the atmosphere, fifty, forty, th th no, still forty, forty-five, forty-four, thirty-five. So it's quite slow. Um. Yeah, the, the engines in general are not very powerful, though that shouldn't be an issue since they are only used for orbital maneuvering, and that's not the most um, power consuming or thrust consuming way. So, now since we want to land at the Kerbal Space Center, we have to think about multiple things, not like when we're trying to land on the moon where we just more or less can follow this blue blue path which you can see now which intersects the surface of Kerbin around this island or this peninsula type of thingy where my cursor is right now there. So um, we, we have to reconsider first of all the rotation of Kerbin and we, of course we have to, to consider the rotation of the moon as well if we are taking the moon as an example. So since we're going with the rotation of the planet we have to think that the planet is rotating underneath as well towards the kind of right-ish side so the KSC will go further to the right and so we have to aim further out right like in front of the Kerbal Space Center so that we until we in the time we get there the Kerbal Space Center will move itself as well to that point where we intersect with the surface of Kerbin and the second part is um, the atmosphere because we have here on Kerbin atmosphere we also have to reconsider this because there's an um, extra drag and we can maneuver more or less in the atmosphere for example with jet engines we can fly better than of course in a world with say without atmosphere or we can of course um kind of slow ourselves faster down but now the back to the the re-entry process since we're now re-entering there is no need to sit through this uh, um, at the regular speed since it's more or less all the same you point yourself prograde and then you more or less just 
pitch up, for example, right now, in this example, I've done a few, um, kind of, this is the very first example, I'm showing them in chronological order where um, I did this, and here I decided to improve the sp uh, stability of the craft, I decided to pump f fuel forward into the forward um, fuel tanks, and this is simply because if your center of mass is further up front, then it's, um, aerodynamically more stable, though it, it shouldn't have any problems even without pumping your fuel forward. Now you can see with all my pitching up, we even reduced our vertical diesel, like vertical speed towards the ground to zero and we're even climbing for a little bit, but that is not really important. The important part is that our orbital plane or, or our trajectory um, shows that we're going to hit around, like intersect the surface of Kerbin around the, around the mountains. So the mountains which you can see now up front um, are probably where we're going to be landing, so our landing spot. And except from this slightly being kind of thinking about not overheating, the re-entry process on itself is pr pretty much easy since we are only coming from a low curve in orbit. So if you're coming down from Minmus you have to really think about this more. And now you can see we are more or less at a stop. Not quite, of course, it stops still flying at 900 meters per second. But since it's still quite a while until we hit the KSC, I decided to throw up the whiplash jet engines and fly the, the rest of the way like a jet plane. And we have 2,800 units of liquid fuel left, so we have more than enough fuel to be able to do this. If you're, of course, shorter in fuel than having, like, not being, not, not needing to fly this way is kind of beneficial of course, that's understandable. So, and now we're back at the final approach, we're flying down it from 5 kilometers, um, yeah, 5 kilometers at a 30 degree angle towards the runway, and now as a general rule of thumb, you can point yourself the same like the, the, um, coordinate, like the, this grid marker on your, your nav pole, then you're being aligned with the runway. And then you can more or less, if you have enough space and like you have the alt altitude, speed, and everything's under your control, you can try and kind of come to like not not crash, but point your nose towards the the big flat area around in front of the runway, of course, around the KSC, and then just slowly pitching up until you're around 200 meters above the ground, and you can fly down to 100 meters, and then you can gently touch down on the surface. So now we're coming in as an example beautiful t uh, coming really beautifully in though I have um, decided to stall like the last bit pitching up slightly before hitting the ground slows your descent a lot down and this is what you should do at the last moment and I did it two times now too early so we kind of flew um, back up again but since um, we have a pretty long runway here there is no problem and now braking though our brakes didn't really work quite well so I decided to increase the braking force by 50% so to from 100 to 150% and since we now landed pretty far away from the space plane hangar let's roll back but in general this should kind of more or less demonstrate the way a normal descent towards the KSC and you can of course practice this by flying normal aircraft but now jumping into the next example we're now decelerating slightly earlier and now even a correction ball burn so that we fly above the Kerber Space Center. Of course, still the same craft. I use the quick safe fire, um, quick safe, so that I could just um, reload the, the thing and then reland it again. So this is the second try, or well, it, it is not the second try since I landed it, but it's the second showcase. And now, as you saw earlier, I went for a more um, kind of the impact with the surface of Kerbin is later than in the previous example since we undershot by quite a while quite a bit since we were right now here almost 1000 meters a second slower than right now and yeah of course so I decided to go and do the opposite thing and now you just heard this small puff sound well maybe in a, a small explosion on the screen this is because one of the air brakes overheated and la later I'll show you the flight planning mo mode like the flight planner and this will also write down the same thing but in this case I can also demonstrate what you can do if you overshoot so I decided to turn towards the left and just turn around turn around and by the way during this 
during those turns I realized that if you pitch up really really hard by high speeds you have a chance that the wings might flip off kind of might, might fall off though I didn't experience this right now luckily of course and now you can see here air brakes um, were overheating and that's why they exploded but the point is um, you should be careful by pitching up at um, high speeds though um, as I said there were no issues so I never broke the wings off completely since I was gentle enough but just a general rule of thumb you, th you should really be kind of a little bit careful there so you might also kind of um, improve on this design of course as well now coming this I decided here to to land on the island runway first of all it's also something another challenge type not really challenge but also kind of another um, landing opportunity so if you decide not to go for the main runway you can also go for the island runway which is more or less the same thing you level flight and then you pitch up slightly before touchdown and again I did the same mistake I pitched up way too early so um, I had to kind of bounce up well without even touching the ground we had to bounce off kind of fly again um, increasing altitude by a little bit and then luckily we had enough room slightly just barely made it um, made a full stop here slightly before the end of the runway though in the end of course except the small damage minor damage by the overheated um, air brake everything went according to plan so and here you get to a third example where I decided to do our retrograde burn around the desert which I will probably showcase just a little bit in a few seconds again a um, burn towards north so we can fly again above the KSC and then you saw we're just uh, not not really by the apoapsis you probably can guess that there's this desert now you can see the desert below us so at the very beginning of the desert you can decelerate towards the kind of so that your intersect is between the KSC and the big island though the big island here which is now coming into screen is more or less the thing kind of where you should aim your cursor to be at this kind of approach when you burn there of course at around the desert so now you can see me performing multiple um, braking maneuvers like for example the space shuttle did and I just wanted to kind of explain that they do work as well they do work but not really by a lot and now you hear me accidentally deploying the landing gear and I didn't realize this until now so <laughs> A few seconds where the, the landing gear was um, exposed, but n luckily there was no damage done to the landing gear, otherwise, it would be really, really sad. Now, I'm really careful with the air brakes, but not careful enough. And again, an air brake overheated it, which is really annoying because later on, um, now we can really see how aerodynamically unstable the craft begins to be if you, air if you only have one air brake. Now, you can see I s overshot by just a little bit, by around 20 kilometers. So I was able to turn around on the surface more or less, like b without going the, over the ocean, I mean on the, the land I mean. And now coming in for final approach, without using any engines, I dis disabled the last engine. And just to show you guys that you can really land this thing without engines at all. And now coming above the runway, trying to land there, but I just, just, just barely didn't make it onto the runway so that's kind of disappointing but I think it this really um, shows that you can bring this thing down or any SSTO without using fuel at all and I mean I did land on the runway didn't I like you can see no engines are activated and I'm standing on the runway you know no just just kidding of course and on by the way you can land on the entire light green flight you can see now in the background which is around the KSC it is very flat as, as flat as a runway so you shouldn't really worry about crashing your plane if you get this close to the runway so on this note taking a screenshot and hope you enjoyed the video and until next time space sheep out